Hey y'all, today is September 3rd, 2023. And the hope and the dream of my heart is that I actually get this video posted today. So we're going to see. I'm also going to just try to to, to get at the heart of what I came on here for because I have somewhere to be um, after I do this video. So today I will be sharing a post that is on my ministry site, icualive.com. I have emails that go out to folks who are subscribed to that website. So if you want to subscribe, please feel free to do so. Um, it's pretty easy. All you do, I think, is just provide your name and your email address. And then anything that I post on the website is going to go directly to your inbox. I usually only send um, or I usually only post on the website, I would say, one to three times in a month. So you're not going to get a ton of emails from me. Um, some posts are, are shorter, some are longer. And this particular one was a longer post. Um, it is one of my lifelines and a lifeline represents just a word that God is uh, ministering to me or something that he is encouraging me to share with other people. And so this particular lifeline is a lifeline number seven and it was titled, um, it is titled, you will fail. This was the word that God gave me, you will fail. And I know when I say that right offhand, that might sound like, what, Lena, girl, what you about to say? So I'm going to read the post and um, I hope that you will be able to connect with it as it was a word of comfort for me. Let me just read. All right. Lifeline number seven, you will fail, posted July 27th, 2023. A few weeks ago, I had a conversation with a friend that centered on accepting our human failures and the reality that we don't get all things right in life. Sometimes we get it wrong, y'all. About midway into our discussion, I thought of lifeline number six, which was another post that I put online titled, Your Faith Will Not Fail. Amazingly, at the time of our conversation, me and this friend, um, it was actually the same day of when I posted lifeline number six, your faith will not fail. It felt kind of ironic, honestly. So I found myself pausing to reflect on these two thoughts. Number one, your faith will not fail. Number two, you will fail. While the second thought may perhaps sound discouraging from the onset, I actually found comfort in those words. It reminded me that while I may fail me, my faith will not fail me. In simplicity, my God will not fail me. He actually is desiring to lift the pressure off of me and put it on himself. Let me give you some verses. Matthew 11, verse 28, which says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Or how about 1 Peter 5, verse 7, which says, Casting all your cares on him because he cares about you. What a relief. God wants our disappointments and failures to be the fuel that actually builds and propels our faith. You will learn to be okay with what you can't do for you when you understand that Jesus is always working on your behalf. He has not, nor will he ever fail you. One of the sweetest lifelines I heard God speak to me this year was, Lena, you're still learning. That's actually how I thought I would title my post today. But God expanded what he was saying to me. If I could summarize those words for you and me, here's what Holy Spirit said. And as you guys listen to this, to those who believe, I want you to receive this for yourself. You're still learning. There will be moments when you fail. That's okay, because I won't. This is, I won't as in like, this is God talking to you, not me. <laughs> I probably will fail you. That, that's okay, because I won't. Um, Psalm 73, verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. Through me, you will have many victories. When you fall, I will help you get back up. Scripture, Psalm 37, verse 24. Though he falls, 
he will not be overwhelmed because the Lord supports him with his hand. Another verse 20, Proverbs 24, verse 16, though a righteous person falls seven times, he will get up, but the wicked will stumble to ruin, into ruin. Take the pressure off of you because your success is alive in me, in him. I'll handle what you can't, Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. I'll make a way where you never could. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. It says, do not remember the past events. Pay no attention to things of old. Look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. You and I have a partnership. John 15 verse 4, remain in me and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. It is your faith in me that I have prayed will not fail. Luke 22 verse 31 to 32, this is where we see um, Jesus speaking to Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, look out. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Trust me to finish what I started. Hebrews 12, verse 2. And it says, keeping our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Friend, let me say this again. Jesus will not fail you. Recently, I was reading Jeremiah 1. Y'all may remember when I talked about Jeremiah 1 when we talked about God's assignment in that video. As I was reading Jeremiah 1, we see God is leading Jeremiah into his assignment. As I read the last verse, verse 19, it ministered beautifully to my soul. Here's what it says. They will fight against you, but they will not ultimately prevail over you. For I am with you always to protect you and deliver you, says the Lord. What really grabbed me was not only God's transparency in telling Jeremiah he would be fought against, but also the inclusion of the word ultimately in this translation. And that particular translation where it says ultimately um, is, I believe that was amplified because usually I use amplified version. Oh, yes, I, I, had, I had that in there, amplified. Okay, um, think about it. How many times have you gone through battles and it seems like you keep losing? Loss after loss, trial after trial, test after test, failure after failure. Look, I get it. I, I really do get it, y'all. <laughs> I may not walk in your shoes, but I'll give you one of my favorite phrases. We may not all have the same circumstances, but we have the same instruction manual and there is one great God. Yes, there is. Just as God was transparent with Jeremiah, I believe he's also being transparent with you and me today. We're going to go through some things. We will have our share of failures in life. Not that we're out here aiming to fail, but ultimately, victory belongs to Jesus. Therefore, it belongs to the sons and daughters of God. And if you're in that number, then you can say, that's me. Victory belongs to me. With God, you will not ultimately fail. Check out Jude 1, verse 24 to 25. This is what it says. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever, and amen. And when it's all said and done, it is my prayer that we will see God's complete purpose and plan made manifest on earth as it is in heaven. 
in Jesus name. Amen. I want to encourage y'all to go back and look at Luke 22 verse 31 to 32. Um, and also the scriptures that I like literally whenever I am writing something, um, it's not without me having scripture for it. So even like when I say you will fail, I think on the surface, someone might be like, you will fail. That's not biblical. But actually, like I actually included a scripture that does connect with that Psalm 73, verse 26. My flesh, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. My portion forever um, is pointing us back to God. I want you all to go back and read Luke 22. It has been such a big thing. For me to just understand um, the journey that Peter was on with God because it just kind of allowed me to look at some things with my own life. And um, yeah, that's why I referenced it in the last video that I posted online. Um, and also, even if you look at the newest lifeline I posted, lifeline number eight, I talk about Peter in that one as well and, and relating it back to us. The reason why that particular verse is so key for me, there was a word that was shared with me and oh my word, as I'm like creating this video, I just thought about the timeline. It was September 5th of 2020, uh, 2020. It was September 5th, 2020, when I received a word from someone, um, a prophetic word that Satan desired to sift me like wheat. That feels so significant that I share that right now. Um, and I've shared kind of some of my journey of things that I experienced um, over the last couple of years. But even though I may have had some wrong turns along the way, I still very much so saw the faithfulness of God and my faith did not fail. Um, if you if you keep reading in Luke 22, um, or probably even in, in Mark, I'm gonna see if I can get to it. If you look at Mark, um, in the book of in the book of Mark, I want to tell y'all hold up. This this part I wasn't gonna add this in, but I'm like, I just, you know, my my brain is going like popcorn right now. Um and Mark chapter 14 and and also look at Luke 22 you can see the life of Peter and the moment where he denies Jesus the three times which are really like his three moments of failure when he gets to the end of that um he cries and he weeps but we also know that on the other side of that Peter was a great man of God there's no denying that and I think it's so important for us to see that and to recognize that because we can look at our own selves in the mirror and maybe we don't get everything right, but God still looks at us and he's like, this is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son. And I had to learn that God was really pleased with me. And even though there were moments, even with the prophetic word that, you know, was shared with me, like there were some rough moments. And that's not to say I won't have rough moments up the road, but God equipped me through it all. Like he legitimately equipped me through it all, equipped me through it all. And I feel like he very much so prepared me for where I am right now. I praise God for the word that I received in 2020 that has prepared me for where I am in 2023. So I just, I hope that something that you guys heard me share was, um, beneficial for you, that it was impactful and that it will change you for the good. Um, I encourage you to go back to the website and read it because it, it may have sounded a little chopped up from me reading it and also study those scriptures. Lifeline number seven, read, read all three. Lifeline number six, seven, and eight because they are all interwoven together and about, they're just all interwoven together. I um, love y'all so much. I really do. I don't know who all has been watching this, these videos, but it is an encouragement to my heart and um, because somebody's watching. The last video I shared right now, it has 26 views and I know two of them were me, but that means that there were 24. I said at, in that video, I'd be happy if 25 people watch. I Look, 25 people haven't watched right now, but I'm still happy 
because I have been able to see myself build a consistency and I'm not going to stop. And um, yeah, maybe this was a cool format. Let me know if this was, if, if you appreciated hearing me just read what I share from the lifeline, um, if there are other things you would like for me to share. I wish I could like have y'all in person for different things. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the Songs of Thanksgiving, which is like under ICU, but it's the event that I lead where we sing and all those different things. I'm trying to figure out how that's going to happen. Um, yes. I've also thought about sharing with you all a little bit of my house journey because that is where I am right now. In Lifeline number eight, you'll read about me talking about prepare. And there are, I would say two very, three very specific things that I know God has been preparing me for is um, launching me more fully in, in music ministry. And when I say that, I don't mean like music ministry is in just Christian music, but just whatever, whatever I want to sing that brings glory to God. Um, the songs that are in my heart, like that's so big. And then also um, my man, like wherever he is. And then also my house. So my house journey is the only thing that I really feel like God has like released, released me to share at this point. So I thought about sharing with you all what that journey is like. Um, yes, I need to stop the video because I'm just talking and I do have to meet with a friend, but I hope that this was a blessing. Thank you guys so much. Um, yes, you may fail. You will have some times where you'll fail, but your faith will not fail. And you will be victorious in Jesus name. Amen. At the end of the day, every word that I say, every song that I sing, yes, I do it for you. You, 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 you. At the end of the day, every word that I write, every story that I tell, yes, I do it all for you. You, you.